These flaky neonis are loaded with the most delicious filling and I'm going to share with you my favorite tips for the perfect neonis every time. Hi, and you're watching Plating It with Wendy, where I share with you recipes which impress with ease. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a like, share and comment. And if you haven't subscribed already, go ahead, press that subscribe button. And while you're at it, if you hit on that bell icon, you'll be notified every time I upload a new video. Now, let's get started. We're going to start this recipe by bringing together our pastry dough. And for that, we're going to go in with two cups, which are approximately 250 grams of all-purpose flour. And to that, we're going to add half a teaspoon of salt. Let's give this a quick whisk so that the salt gets mixed well with the flour. For those lovely crispy nuris, we're going to go in with 35 grams, which is about four tablespoons of pure ghee. We're just going to work the flour into the ghee so that the ghee gets a chance to coat the flour. And now it's time to dive in with your fingers. We're just going to go and crumble it up, making sure that the ghee has coated the flour well. And what you're looking for is like a wet sand-like texture. And once you're able to press it firm together, you know you're done. And for an added step, what I like to do is to take it between my palms and just brush it together. This helps to get that nice flaky crust to your newbies. And my mom would always add a little vanilla for extra flavor. So I'm going to go in with one teaspoon of pure vanilla extract. Just giving this a quick whisk around. And now let's bring the dough together by adding in some hot water. And I've got about half a cup of hot water, but we're going to add it in little at a time. And only adding as much as we need to bring it together as a dough. The dough has come together perfectly and I've added just shy of half a cup of water. Just kneading it a little bit. We're going to cover it up with a plastic wrap and allow it to rest for about 10 minutes so that the gluten gets a chance to develop. To make the paste which we're going to layer between our pastry sheets, we're going to go in with 2 tablespoons of cornstarch and 1 and a half tablespoons of pure ghee. And now we're going to mix it together till we get a smooth paste. We're going to cover this with a plastic wrap and leave it aside while we give the dough another knead. We're just going to knead the dough one more time. You can see how soft it has already become. Now you're going to knead this dough for about four to five minutes and then you'll find that it becomes nice and soft. We're going to cover the dough once again and allow it to rest for the second time while we go over to the stove and prepare our filling. To a heated pan, we're going to add 150 grams of mawa or koya. And on a low heat, we're going to cook it till it first melts down and then starts leaving the pan. After some time, you'll find that it's softening out. And now you just got to go on cooking it a little bit. So now you can see it has softened out and it's leaving the pan. So it's time to take it off and put it in a bowl to cool. Now to our pan, we're going to add half a tablespoon of pyogi. And to that, we're going to add in two tablespoons of semolina. And we're quickly going to roast our semolina in the pure ghee. We're going to roast it till we get a little color to the semolina. Okay, our semolina has roasted. So now let's take it out and put it into a bowl. Now once again to the pan, we're going to add half a tablespoon of pure ghee. And to that, we're going to add one tablespoon of sesame seeds, 10 grams or two tablespoons of chopped cashew nuts, 15 grams or two tablespoons of chopped almonds, 18 grams or two tablespoons of chopped pistachios, three tablespoons or 25 grams of chironji. To that, let's add just a pinch of salt. Now let's mix this all together and roast them till they get a little color. The nuts have got well roasted and now it's time to add in 30 grams or two tablespoons of raisins. And you want to add the raisins last, otherwise they're gonna burn. So we're just gonna give it a quick stir and then take it off the heat. Now let's empty this into a bowl. Now all the ingredients for our filling has cooled down and you'll find that the mava or koya has become a little crumbly and that's exactly what you're looking for. Now you're gonna crumble it down with our fingers. Just gonna pull out little bits and crumble it up. This gives an amazing flavor to the filling. I've had so many requests for my layered Nuri's recipe that I had to share this recipe with you this Christmas. We're going to add the crumbled mava to our dry fruits. And to that, let's add the cool semolina. And to that, we're going to add 50 grams or 8 tablespoons of desiccated coconut. And to sweeten it up, we're going to add 60 grams or 5 tablespoons of powdered sugar. 
And for some traditional flavors, I'm crushing six cardamoms and we're going to add that to the filling. Now let's mix all this goodness up together. This makes for the most delicious, amazing filling for Neuri's. And now we're going to roll out the layers of our pastry dough. And see how soft the dough is. Now we're going to cut this into half. And we're going to cover half up while we work with half. Now we're going to divide this into three portions. Two and three. Now while we cover up two of them, we're going to roll up one into a thin sheet. Just going to start by tucking in the corners and making a round ball of it. And now give it a slight press. Now let's roll this out. And we're not going to put any flour on our work surface. And you want to roll it out till it becomes pretty thin. So you're looking for about that thickness. Now we're going to take it out and put it on a plate till we roll the other two. And now let's roll out our second pastry sheet. Just going to keep it on top of the first one. There, our third sheet is ready. Now what we're going to do is take one of the sheets and we're going to take some of the mixture we had made earlier and start applying it to the sheet. I'm going to go right to the ends and we're going to try to spread it out evenly. Now this is what is going to give us those lovely layers to the new wreath. Okay, now that we've spread it out, we're going to take the second sheet and place it over. Just give it a little stretch so that it reaches right over it. I'm going to press it down so that we remove any air bubbles. And once again, we're going to take the mix and layer this sheet as well. And now, we're going to take the third sheet and place it on the top. And once again, using our palm, we're just going to rub it on the top to try and remove any air pockets that may be there. And we're just going to dust the plate with a little all-purpose flour. And then we're going to lay down the layered sheets on it, cover it with a plastic wrap. And now we're going to place it in the refrigerator for about 15 minutes so that it gets a chance to firm up before we roll it out again. Our pastry dough has now firmed up and it's time to roll it out. I'm just going to dust the box surface with just a little bit of all-purpose flour. And sprinkling just a little on the top and then we're just going to brush it off. Now using our rolling pin, very gently we're going to roll it out. Don't put too much pressure when rolling it. Do it very gently so that it rolls out evenly. And you're going to roll it out till it's about that thick. You don't want it too thick nor too thin. To shape our nuris we're going to go in with a cutter which is three and a half inch in diameter. And we're going to make them a little bit small because we have so many sweets to eat, we want to taste them all. Now what I like to do is to put out a little flour on the side of my workstation so that we can dip the cutter into it before cutting the dough. So now what we're going to do is take the cutter, just, and now we're going to go and cut our first newly. Now we're going to take the cut out pastry and place it in the dip of our fingers and then we're going to add in a heaped teaspoon of our filling. Now the next step is to take a little water on your brush and we're going to brush the water around the filling. Not touching the filling, at the same time not touching the edge of the pastry. Because we want the layers of the pastry to open up when we fry the newbie. Now what we're going to do is bring the two centers together and pinch it and then we're going to go to the sides and pinch the sides. But we're pinching it more towards the filling, keeping the edge loose. And now using your little finger, you're just going to press it down around the filling so that we seal it up well. And we're not pressing it towards the edge. And there, your first nuri is ready for frying. And now to make our last nuri, once again, we're gonna put the filling in the center. 
I'm going to take the brush and just brush on a little water. Once again, it's more towards the filling and less towards the edge. And now we're first going to pinch the center together and then we're going to go from the left to the center and then from the right to the center. And then we're going to take up two little fingers and press it down around the filling. And we're going to keep the edges a little free. This is going to give them a chance to puff up when we fry the newries. And there you go. Now let's place it with the rest. Now we're going to cover them with some damp paper towels while we heat up the oil. And you don't want the temperature of the oil to be too high. It should be just about 280 degrees Fahrenheit or 140 degrees Celsius. Or you could even check the temperature of the oil by throwing in a piece of the pastry dough. And then if it takes its time to come up to the surface, you know that the oil is hot enough. And there, it's come to the surface now. So we can take this out and start frying the newries. I've placed a few newries in the spider skimmer and then I'm going to immerse it in the hot oil. Just adding about three more. Oops, he doesn't want to go in. I'm going to let them fry and come to the surface. You can already see the layers, how beautifully they're coming apart. Occasionally you want to turn them around so that they fry evenly on all sides. But remember to be gentle when turning them around. Our newries have got a lovely golden brown color and you can see all the layers. And now it's time to take them out and allow them to drain and cool. Now we're going in with the second batch. Our second batch of newries is almost ready. So we're gently going to place these into the colander at the back so that they cool completely. Oh my goodness, look at that. And now it's time to give the newries a taste. Wow, let me go in for this one. Well, this is so stuffed with all the filling and it's so yum, you've got to give this recipe a try. And if you want to enjoy these newries as much as I do, hop onto my website, platingitwithwendy.com where you will find the full written recipe. Thanks for watching. See you soon.